Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we're going to be talking with Corey Monteith in the afterlife. Corey was the actor in the television show Glee. So you may have been familiar with that, that TV show. And I had been wanting to channel with him for a while, but I wasn't really sure how much content we would have or what kind of conversation we would have. So I've decided just to see how it goes, see what happens. So, all right, Corey, you died so young. He said, yes, yes. And it feels like it was at your own hands, correct? Yes. I feel like he overdosed. He didn't, I don't feel like he committed suicide, he overdosed. So you had addiction issues. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, that's, that's public knowledge. And you're from Canada, that's correct, yep, yeah. yes. And at the time of your death, were you actually dating Leah Michelle? Because I know that Leah Michelle was also, was one of your uh, co-stars on Glee and that you guys had had a relationship. He says, we were apart. We were, he's making me feel like we were on, we were, we were together and then we weren't together and we were together and we weren't together. But he says, we were always in love. Like there was always love there. There's always love there. But he's making me feel like, it feels like they were in the process of getting back together or strengthening their relationship. Cause I'm feeling the heart energy between the two of them. And it feels like they were strengthening their relationship or there was an understanding and allowing for um, growth and health. Cause his health, he's making me feel like his health was the most important thing to her and to him. And it feels like, I, if I have to say, I think they're together. I think they were together at the time of his death. Not like physically together, but like, Romantically, relationship-wise, I feel like they were coming together or they were together. Like they're, It feels like they're a couple, but I publicly, I don't know if they were. So I'm kind of conflicted with that. But I, if I have to say, I think they're coming together again. They're getting together again. There's definitely love there, you guys. There's definitely love there. Like she was heartbroken. I feel like they were engaged because he's showing me a ring. So I feel like they were engaged at one point but they were kind of, you know, he needed to be healthy. And he says, I was just on a short trip. He says, I wasn't intending to um, be, it almost feels like he had to go on a trip for business or something. He had to go do something and then he was gonna come back to the States. <clears throat> something for a project or finishing up something or something, something for work, it feels like business. And then, but his family also doesn't feel that far from there. So he must be from Canada. I think he's from Canada. And, but he says it was supposed to be a short kind of a trip thing. Um, Cause I'm feeling like I'm high up. So either I'm on the second level of, or third level of a house or I'm in an apartment building. I feel like I'm high up. And I, oh no, I feel like I'm in a city and I'm high up. Not a busy, busy city, but I feel like, like a suburb it would be maybe. Um, Heroin? Did you do like uh, IV drugs? Because he's making me feel like it started as like a painkillers or something. I don't know if there was an accident or what's going on, but it feels like there was like oxy or something. And then like some kind of derivative of heroin, which could actually be heroin or something. Not that it matters, you guys. It doesn't matter what type of drugs he was do utilizing. But it feels like it started off as um, nothing serious, and then it grew into a pro it became a problem. And he's saying something about my dad, so I don't know what he means about his dad. Like, did it, if his dad stepped in and tried to help him, or if his dad wasn't in his life, and so there's an issue with his dad. So, yeah. See, I knew this channeling wasn't going to be easy for me necessarily because I don't, I don't feel a major polar connection to you. Um, from your career. I mean, I totally glee, great show, you know, that kind of a thing for a while. I watched it maybe two seasons, that was it. But um, I had a busy family life then, so, you know. Um, but I feel like there's some reason, um, a bigger reason to talk to you. So did you commit suicide? He says, no. He says, no, I didn't intend, I didn't intend to die. I didn't intend to die. 
And so had you, were you healthy at the time and then was this just like a binge thing or? He's like rubbing his thighs. You know how when people get uncomfortable, they kind of rub their thighs. He kind of leans back a little bit and he says, yeah, you know, kind of, kind of, it kind of was. He said, I, I had, I had, um, I had used a bit, a little bit, and uh, just a little before that. And he says, I was recently out of rehab though, because he's making me feel like he had a couple of months where he was good, but then he kind of started using again. And then he, then he was in Canada, he was by himself, it feels like, and for work, something for business related, and then, this happened. Then he, did you get a bad? No. Yeah, too much. It's, he's almost making me feel like, um, like something was interlaced. You know how like Prince died too, like with that, like fentanyl mixed with something else and, and, and it didn't, it didn't like just, it didn't work well. That's how he's making me feel. And also like River Phoenix too, like he had too much um, like something, he had two things mixed together and it was just too much for a system. That's what he's making me feel like. So do you have a bigger purpose or message for people? He says, yeah, don't die young. <laughs> he's like, don't die, don't die, he says. In all seriousness, he says, I, I really hurt the people I loved when I left. And I didn't know that I, I, I dealt with depression. I, I dealt with depression. I don't, I don't know if, um, if you know that, he says, but I dealt with depression. Um, but there were so many people around me that wanted to help me, that could have helped me. And I just, I didn't, it just, it's hard to, you know, lean on people over and over and over again, and you know you're disappointing them when you, you know, fall back, you're successful, and then you use again, and then you start over again, and you have to get clean again, and then you have to, you know, reset your life, get your life back on track, and it's not, he says, it's not easy, and it's a lot of, I, I would want people to know who are going through addiction to know that it's not just you get clean and everything's great, and, and life, it, it just stays that way, it's like, status quo, doesn't. There are times in your life that hit you and beat you down and you just have a dark moment and you make a bad choice and, and you're back into the addiction again and it just, it just consumes you, it just sucks you in. And so don't, but don't give up. Don't, don't feel bad that you did that. Just recognize that, hey, that was that day and now there's a new day. Like every day, he said, it sounds so, Simple, but every day is a new day. Don't, you can't, if you keep beating yourself up for the, the failures you have, you won't be successful. Because it's, it's the long game. You gotta be in it, you gotta get a good headspace and be in it for the long game. So if you screw up, then you reset. You screw up and you reset. I didn't do that. Like, I, I, I didn't ask for help. I didn't, I wasn't able to, you know, after the second or the third time, you can't, it's, it's hard to, it's not just about your pride. You see that there's other people that are hurting because you, because of you and your choices you're making. And that's on you. And it's, that's hard to deal with on top of the, the depression. And you already feel lousy. You feel really bad about yourself. It's, it just compounds it, you know. I'm not saying there's any excuse for addiction. I'm just saying that it's hard, man. It's hard. It's not easy. But I want people to know and be realistic about it that I do believe, I believe you can survive. I believe you can. I didn't. I didn't. And all it takes is once to, to get a bad, all it takes is once and then you're gone, you're dead. So, I guess I would, looking back, I would rather, I would rather have felt bad about myself and asked for help or let people help me, let them, let people love you, 
Why is that so hard? Because you don't feel like you deserve it when you're abusing. And you don't feel like a quality person, you know? You don't feel like a quality human. You feel broken. It's hard to let yourself be loved, you know, when you're like that. You don't feel that. You don't feel like you deserve it. But you gotta, you gotta just set that aside, man. And you gotta just, you gotta just let your family and your loved ones help you, you know? If, if you're lucky enough to have people that love you and care about you, then you should respect that love and uh, be willing to try again. You know, try again. Just try again. I'm sorry for the way things happened. He's saying, I did not commit suicide is what he's telling me. He's telling me he didn't commit suicide. I don't know if there's reports that he did. I don't know, but he didn't. He's saying, he's like, you know, and I'm, in my, in my experience, Corey, as a, a medium, when I've talked to other people who've had this experience where they've had addiction and they've died because of an overdose situation, it, see, it feels really close to suicide because it feels like there's an accountability piece, like you made the choice and so therefore you, your choice resulted in the end of your life, you know? And so I feel a little bit of that, but I feel more like, no, it was just a bad, and I, I feel like you switched drugs or something. Like I feel like you may have started off as like pills or something and then you went into heroin or it might have been cocaine. I don't think it was cocaine. I don't know for sure though. I feel like there's different things that he was utili utilizing. So I don't know if he switched or what was going on and maybe that was the problem is the combo of things that created the, the problem at, at that, created the, um, the impact to the body and then there was death. Cause it looks like cardiac arrest and there's like vomit everywhere, so. And he looks like he fell, like he hit his head. I don't know that it was in a hotel though. It almost looks like an Airbnb thing or a condo or something like that. Is there anything else? Hmm. I think part of the reason why I've wanted to talk to you is because of what you just said just now. So he just said, you've got to live your own life. You've got to live your own life. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to recognize that you are the one that makes the, the call. You know, you are the one that makes the, the choices. Like he's not using the word choices, but he's like, you are the one that decides. You got to live your own life. And that comes with consequences and responsibility. You, got, you, you have to take care of yourself. And if you don't, bad things happen. And you end up hurting the people that you love the most, he says. Making a, he's making me feel like he has a mom and a sister and they are devastated that he's de dead. They are devastated. So he's feeling like that. Like he wants you to understand that there's consequences and that the addiction is like a sickness, like he's making me feel like it's a disease, like an illness, and you gotta ask for help, you gotta receive help, you gotta show up where you're at, and you gotta be real with yourself. You gotta be real honest with yourself and show up in the moment where you're at and just accept the responsibility and try again. He's like, try again, try again to get better, try again. He's like, don't, don't give up, you know? Don't do that. He's like, don't do what I did. He says, I have a lot of lost opportunities. Do I have regrets? Yeah. Of course I do. Of course I do. Of course I have regrets. Yeah, I do. Okay, Corey. Hmm. All right, you guys. Wow, it's kind of a, a heavy energy there, hasn't it? It's more serious. There's a levity to it. It's impactful. 
So this is Bridget at Above Life Channel. If you're hurting, if you're in the situation of addiction, if you are battling mental health, try to get help. Try again to get healthy because you are worth it. You are totally lovable, even if you can't feel that for yourself. There's a reason why you were created. There's a reason. Have hope. Have hope. And remember, at Above Life Channel, the reminder always is, this is your life and you're worth it. So live it. Live. Live your life. Be healthy and be well. Thanks for watching.